Part two of session 40 of the raw material. And I'm calling it like that because today we'll be talking about raw themselves. Let's start. So this part is exclusively dedicated to Ra because most of the questions that are relevant in the rest of the session are about them, except for a couple of ones at the end that has to do with channel books and information about that. But most of it is just about Ra. So let's just get into the first question that Don asks, which is of what density level is Ra? Ra explains, I am six density with a strong seeking towards seven density. The harvest for us will be in only approximately two and one half million of your years, and it is our desire to be ready for harvest as it approaches in our space-time continuum. This is cool to know because we first realize in the books that Ra is also waiting for a harvest. Now, the details of that harvest I don't think are very well explained, but it's fun to know that everybody is on their own cycles. And this kind of makes sense once we understand the evolution of the planets and the entities living in the planets. But little spoiler alert, we actually get to reside in stars in higher densities, but we'll get to that in future sessions if we haven't talked about it already in other content that I make. But that's pretty cool to know that they are also part of a harvest and they're waiting for that. Now it's gonna take approximately uh, two and a half million years, yes? And that is of our years. They experience time in a different way because they are in a different space-time continuum as they, they say. So pretty cool there. Next question is, and you ready yourselves for this harvest through the service you can provide. Is this correct? Ra says, this is correct. We offer the law of one, the solvent of paradoxes, the balancing of love light and light love. Don asks, how long is one of your cycles? Ra says, one of our cycles computes to 75 million of your years. Don asks, in your service in given the law of one, do you work with any other planets on Earth at this time or just Earth? And Ra says, we work only with this planetary sphere at this time. So, so far we got that they polarize, and this is something that becomes more obvious, and I think it's relevant to talk about it now, especially in our reality here in third density, is that once you polarize, you want to seek more polarization, especially if you're in sixth density, there's only one way to polarize, which is service to others. And... As we go in levels of consciousness, it feels like the amount of work that you can do to polarize, uh, it's diminish. So the higher the density, the lower the, the amount of work, at least that's how I understand it. Don't quote me on that, or maybe quote me on that because I'm saying it, uh, but I, I'm not sure. That's what it seems. Uh, to be and in four density it's there's going to be uh, less work to be done for polarization why this is relevant for us because we reside in the heaviest density which is third and we here can polarize tremendously uh, like Ross says there is a lot of catalysts here that we can use so that's just a uh, pragmatic side of you know understanding this part and this can possibly uh, mean that or and this is just something that I've thought about you know when when computing the time frames that they have and uh, the time frames that we have in this cycles they have a way longer 75 million I mean we have a 75,000 cycle uh, here for for total harvest you know three major cycles and one great cycle uh, or master cycle and the master cycle is 75,000, they have to weigh 75 million, which means, you know, in a way, even if they perceive time differently, I'm pretty sure it's a longer time to do more work, to polarize and then graduate to seven. So that's my take there. Uh, and the other thing was just that, yeah, they're only working here, which kind of makes sense, you know, they should be invested 
in one planet at a time. And we're, we should be grateful that they're here. So let's keep going. So Don asks, you stated that you were called by 372,000 Earth entities. Does this mean that it is it is this number that will understand and accept the law of one? And Ra explains, we cannot estimate the correctness of your statement for those who call are not in every case able to understand the answer to their calling. Moreover, those who were not calling previously may, with great trauma, discover the answers to the call nearly simultaneously with their late call. There is no time space in call. Therefore, we cannot estimate the number of your mind-body-spirit complexes, which will, in your space-time continuum distortion, hear and understand. So the question was pretty simple. If 352,000 people who were calling, this is a number that Ra gave previously, um, are the people that can understand the law of one. And Ra's making a huge distinction. The people calling may or may not be aware that they're calling in this regard. Uh, and also the people who are, are calling may find the answers right away. So there's no way to estimate how many of those 352,000 people can understand this material. And likewise, I derive that even if people were not calling, like me, for example, uh, who didn't call for 25 years, uh, I can possibly understand and at least familiarize myself with this material. So the question was kind of uh, weak in terms of what it was asking and how it actually works. And it's just fun to see the mechanisms behind it. So that's what basically Rai is saying here. It's, uh, it's rather simple. Let's go on. Don says, how do, you, how do you normally perform your service of giving the law of one? How have you done this over the last 2,300 years? How have you normally given this to Earth people? Ra explains, we have used channels such as this one, but in most cases, the channels feel inspired by dreams and visions without being aware, consciously of our identity or existence. This particular group has been accentuatedly trained to recognize such contact. This makes this group able to be aware of a focal of vibrational source of information. And this is something that I've talked about in the past, like how this uh, this group of Carla, Don, and Jim had such a harmony that they were able to channel this information, kind of receive it. They were uh, vibrating in that specific frequency that was necessary for this. But at the same time, he's given some pretty cool information here because they do communicate um, through dreams and visions, which is something that we all have access to. So uh, making a call for uh, not only Ra, but the other entities of the Confederation of Planets may yield some good information, you know, through dreams, visions, and so on. Uh, again, channeling is a tricky thing. Carla did a, an extent work on this, and I would recommend that you find it out. Obviously, the links for all that are in the description here for the LNL Research website. But it's, uh, it's particularly cool to see that this information can be also channeled um, just regularly, you know, through visions and so on because they are always trying to help us in many ways. And it's always in a mysterious way. They cannot just come down and say, hey, we're here, let's have a chat. So um, pretty cool answer there. And Don asks, when you contact the entities in their dreams and otherwise, these entities first have to be seeking in the direction of the law of one. Is this correct? Ra says, this is correct. For example, the entities of the nation Egypt were in a state of pantheism, as you may call the distortion towards separate worship of various portions of the Creator. We were able to contact one whose orientation was toward the one. And again, um, that's a little distinction here just that I didn't mention, but that's exactly uh, what we were talking about before. It doesn't have only just to be with the law of one and, uh, and Ra. You know, or specific, like you have to know which entity you are channeling. This is why you always challenge the entity that, you know, that come in, if you're a channeler, of course, to, um, to identify themselves as coming from either the conscious, uh, Christ consciousness is a big one because a lot of Christians have that devotion. And that's what Carla used to do with all the entities, just challenge them in the name of Christ, basically. Um, and there are other methods, of course, but like he's saying here, or they are saying here, not he, 
um, they, as long as they have seeking towards the one, and this is just something that may be out of, you know, um, out of nothing. It could be without previous knowledge is what I'm saying, like all this academic information and knowledge that we have. It could be just somebody, say, in the jungles who have no idea about all this material. They don't even need to read or anything, but they're seeking the one in their vibration, the way they see the world and everything, and they'll most likely be contacted by them. So uh, again, just a small distinction there that I think is relevant just to share. Let's go on. Don asks, I assume that as the cycle ends and inconveniences occur, there will be some entities who start seeking or be catalyzed into seeking because of the trauma and will then hear your words telepathically or in written form such as this book. Is this correct? Ra says you are correct except in understanding that the inconveniences have begun. This is a very quoted uh, part of the law of one, the raw material itself, because Don is asking about the inconveniences here on Earth for the harvest. And from 1981, Ra already said the inconveniences have already started because the harvest is now basically. So um, it it does leave a lot to, and this is something I'll throw in just because uh, because I can. <laughs> but um, there is there is a process right now which is the harvest, and I I think. I've been changing my mind in terms of how the harvest works and the solar flash, which the two seem to be uh, linked. And there, for from my interpretation, again, this is just my speculation. I feel like this ascension process is the harvest, and it's becoming very difficult with inconveniences, like Ross says. Uh, and this gets interpreted also by the reaction of the Earth and cataclysms so-called cataclysms or uh, geology and um, weather uh, patterns in, in the earth. But the inconveniences might have to do also with the entities being harvested because of their lack of polarization, which is a huge thing right now in humanity. So um, I do believe that this is not going to be, uh, and again, this is me, I don't think it's going to be a, a sudden flash. Uh, but I'm open, you know, for that too. I'm, it's not like I'm rooting for a long-term uh, ascension process. But Rod Das says in uh, future sessions that the transition will take between 100 and 700 years, I believe, and that brings us to, I believe, 2081 and 2681, I think. So, um, you know, there's a big gap there. But anyhow, we're not speculating anymore. Let's keep going with the material. Next question is, can you tell me who was responsible for transmitting the book OSP? Hope I pronounced that right. Ra says, this was transmitted by one of Confederation Social Memory Complex status, whose idea as offered to the council was to use some of the known physical history of the so-called religions or religious distortions of your cycle in order to veil the and partially unveil aspects or primal distortion of the law of one. Okay, so I'm not familiar too much with the book of OSP. I only did a little research and I found out that it's a huge material too. It's a very uh, packed book and it has a lot of information. It seems like Ron's saying that it kind of like has information from different religions and sources. Uh, but then again, I, I'm not gonna talk about it because I am not at all familiar with it. But the question was if it was transmitted by uh, or who was being the, uh, the, the transmission of the book uh, responsible. My God, I can talk today. <laughs> and that has to do with the Confederation. So the Confederation of Planets actually uh, was involved in this book. So depending on what you want to, to read, there's a recommendation from Ra. Next question. Actually, no, we go on. All names can be taken to be created for their vibrational characteristics. The information buried within has to do with a deeper understanding of love and light and the attempts of infinite intelligence through many messengers to teach, learn those entities of your sphere. All right, so let me just finish that. <laughs> He's still talking about the Book of Osp. Uh, again, I'm not familiar with all the, um, all the names and characters in there. And the information is, uh, they said, is buried within has to do with deeper understanding of love and light. I mean, it, I think that once we have a good grip of how this reality works, 
we can understand all these things. For example, I was reading in my research, one of the things that they do say and claim there in the book of Os is something that the Bible says, which is the creation of man, which is God, um, uh, I think it's excel his breath. I forgot the right words, but basically put his breath into, uh, into man and then it came alive. Well, I mean, that's that's a subtle way to say that the essence of God is in every one of us, in men. Uh, there wasn't just one man that came here, you know, and we have that understanding already. So it's kind of symbolic and we can at least interpret it. You know, there's no ultimate truth. And we'll get to that couple of words in a little bit. But uh, ultimate truth is just, you know, what you believe and what you believe is always changing. So again, you know, if you are inclined to check out this book, I have it in the description if you want to go and see it and read it. And maybe let me know if it's cool. I might read it. So, Don is asking, have there been any other books that you can name that are available for this purpose that have been given by the Confederation? Ross says, we cannot share this information for it would distort your discernment patterns in your future. You may ask about a particular volume denied you got denied there okay so don asks who transmitted the oranti book ross says this was given by a series of discarnate entities of your own earth planes the so-called inner planes this material is not passed by the council all right so the book of orantia again i'm not familiar with it i've only read some uh some information about it it's kind of cool because it it's very mysterious in the way that it came about um some um some person that it's not really um, disclosed who it is uh, was channeling this information in a very weird way in its dreams and uh, through notes that were found, I believe, in his house uh, all over. And apparently it was him writing them while he was asleep or unconscious. And this was all gathered by a psychiatrist that was working, you know, with this person. And, you know, the story is pretty cool. Again, I have the links in the description if you want to check them out. But Ra is saying that it, it was not passed by the council and it was discarnate entities of our own earth planes, which may mean the people that we know as the Anshars by Corey Good. It could be um, other entities who live in our lower planes or um, just somehow in, in our dimension. Hard to tell, he doesn't expound on it, so that's all we got. Again, the Oranti book in the description if you wanna check it out. And again, let me know if it's cool, I might, you know, take a look at it. So now he's asking about Edgar Casey. really cool stuff. Who spoke through Edgar Casey? Ross says, no entity spoke through Edgar Casey. Where did the information come from that Edgar Casey channeled? Ra explains, we have explained before that the intelligent infinity is brought into intelligent energy from eighth density or octave. The one sound vibration, vibratory complex called Edgar, use this gateway to view the present, which is not the continuum you experience, but the potential social memory complex of this planetary sphere. The term you peoples have used for this is the Akashic record or the whole of records. This is the last question which you may now ask. Okay. I made that little notation there because it's not the last question and I'll get to that. But first, Edgar Casey. Edgar Casey is known to have done telepathical uh, predictions on people. I think it was over 2000 or I forgot. It was thousands of um, just remote basic, uh, basically uh, predictions on people and diagnosis too. Edgar Casey is fascinating uh, in that regard. And speaking of the law of one, a lot of you guys are familiar with David Wilcock. David Wilcock seems to be the incarnate or reincarnation of Edgar Casey, and there's a huge case, you know, behind this, which is pretty cool. Uh, and I do believe it, you know, to a great degree because the similarities are pretty much there. Uh, but in terms of the channel information, like Ra is saying, um, there is there's no channel or uh, there is nobody channeling this information to Edgar Casey. He was actually just accessing the Akashic records or uh, the whole of records, which is, again, the way I see it, and this is something that started making a lot more sense as Edgar Casey, uh, Edgar Casey's prophecies or um, just predictions 
started to fall off over time is that it has to do with time space. Time space is where uh, time is three dimensional. So we can see the what call what Ra calls the probabilities, pub, uh, possibilities, vortexes, which are just the possibilities of something happening uh, because of the current state of space time. And Edgar Casey had that access through intelligent infinity and was able to see the highest probabilities for something to happen. And that's how he he got access to all this information. But one of the things that is known is that in his predictions, as time went on, I think in the 70s or 80s, I might be wrong on the date, but the thing is that his predictions started falling off because he wasn't uh, pretty accurate. And that may have to be with the distortion towards time space that happened now that we're getting into the uh, higher vibrations of the Earth and things start to be uh, much more improbable. So uh, just a little bit more information there. And the reason why I left is because Ra says, uh, very often uh, in in the book, they say it's the last question, and then they say we can answer a uh, brief question. So um, that's the last question I'm going to leave because I think it's pretty cool what they say. And Don is asking, can you tell me if we are accomplishing our effort reasonably well? And Ra says, the law is one. There are no mistakes. And I thought that was very powerful to end this video because um, we often tend to think like Don, you know, if we're doing something right, if we're doing something wrong. And uh, I love Ra's answer because they say the law is one and there are no mistakes. And we can apply this to ourselves in this reality, in our experience as humans, because we are kind of obsessed with the right and wrong mentality, the good and evil. And we don't understand that these concepts are just a way to perceive the world, not to live it. Huge distinction there. And when we act upon, say, our environment and our reality, there is no mistake. We just do the things that we feel we need to do. And I always say, like, the intention is what matters. I mean, that's not me, but everybody says it. But the, the little spin that I give it to is that no matter what you do, you know, it's you always have the intention of doing it for whatever reason, even if it's, you know, if you are inclined to do something that you can, you, uh, you, uh, you concern with yourself with being wrong or, and you, you do it anyways, that's fine. You did it. You know, there's no wrong. You did it knowing that it was wrong. Good. Learn the lesson, had an experience, move on. So, um, you know, that's another thing just to, for a final reflection here that we get caught up on, you know, by being judged or judging ourselves for the things that we do. And the truth is that there is no judgment. There shouldn't be any judgment. And again, we're obsessed with that because we live in that society and we've been indoctrinated to believe that kind of, um, I guess, perception of ourselves. But it's in the end irrelevant because there are no mistakes. So there you have it. That's all I got for part two. Hope you enjoyed the video. I love talking about Ra, of course. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe, like, and like I said, there's a bunch of links if you're interested in some of the material that they were talking about here with the books of the OSP and Urantia. Hope I'm pronouncing that well. Thank you for uh, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. All my love to you. Send me my love because I need it. And I'll see you next week in the next video. Session 15.